So in the previous lesson on uh, instrumental variables theory, I mainly focused on the uh, single regression case assuming a single instrument Z. So in that case where we have uh, as many instruments as we have uh, uh, endogenous regressors, uh, we would say that the model is exactly identified. But uh, in many cases, uh, we have the situation with the over-identification. And this forms the topic of the, of the present lesson then. So um, we, we discussed that, the, that uh, there could be alternative measurements or alternative proxy variables that could be used as instruments when we have the uh, measurement errors problem, or we could use some past values uh, in the panel data setting. But um, in, in some sense, if, if, the, if we are searching for the good instruments, it, uh, it might, might be the case that we find more, more instruments than would be actually needed. So if we not have just one, one good instrument, but we have many instruments, then in some sense, it would be also inefficient use of the information to just uh, randomly discard uh, some of the instruments that we found. So uh, the classic solution to this is the so-called two-stage least squares method. And in fact, that was already what we used in this uh, uh, introductory example of the, of the hedonic model of housing market, where we first regressed uh, the condition of apartment on some explanatory variables, and then subsequently plugged in this uh, predicted condition to the original regression model. So that example actually used this two-stage least squares method. So I will just um, briefly recap what we, what we did uh, uh, at more theoretical level. And then, uh, then uh, I'll give you another another empirical example to illustrate. So, suppose now that we have just a single uh, single endogenous variable, but we have some uh, some uh, L minus one instrument. So we have now multiple instruments. So the idea with the two stage least squares is then to first regress this our problematic endogenous regressor with this all. L minus one instruments, and then take the fitted values, which I have here indicated by X asterisk, uh, uh, based on these uh, uh, instruments and their, their estimated coefficients. So we get then the, the predicted X. So in this way, the first stage regression is uh, uh, aggregating all this information in these, uh, our instrumental variables together. So all of the instruments matter in forming the prediction. And then in the second stage, we use the predicted X to, to in, the, in the regression model. So I want to highlight that, uh, that uh, although it's kind of intuitive to think about it in the case of the measurement error, so if there's some, some measurement error in X that correlates with the, with the epsilon as we have, uh, as we have uh, uh, discussed earlier, so obviously if we have then some alternative measurements, so we could get this kind of, uh, kind of, uh, predicted X asterisk that is uh, free from this kind of uh, measurement errors. And then we could get this kind of more cleaner measure of X to the, to the, to the regression model to, to avoid it. But same kind of uh, uh, rationale can be used also when we have a simultaneity problem or, or omitted variable bias, for example. So any type of endogeneity can be addressed with this kind of two-stage least squares. I'll, I'll highlight this two-stage least squares because uh, I believe that this is very intuitive way of thinking about the instruments that, uh, and it also highlights the fact that these in instruments do not really enter the original regression model, but are used for predicting this or kind of uh, cleaning up this problematic endogenous explanatory variable. So um, a couple of practical notes on the two stage least squares. So um, we can also use this uh, if we have more than one problem variable or more than one endogenous variable. So, so uh, in this, uh, this way, we should kind of classify our exponatory variables X to two subsets. So, so those that we believe that are exogenous, which are not correlated with the epsilon, and those that are endogenous, which do correlate with the, with the, with the, with the error term epsilon. So uh, note that also that typically all these exogenous regressors are also included uh, as instruments. So they also are included in the first stage regression. That's, that's important for the theoretical integrity of the two-stage least squares also. And uh, 
Another thing is that, uh, that uh, this two-stage uh, least squares estimation uh, uh, doesn't really, we don't need to really do it in two stages. Uh, it's kind of, uh, might be intuitive to do so. And I'll give you some, some reason why it is, could be helpful, but it's not, uh, not necessary. So for example, when we use this, uh, IV rec command in, in, uh, in Stata, then, uh, then, uh, in, uh, in fact, Stata would compute it in just a single stage. Uh, if you want to do, do this two stage least squares in Excel, for example, then uh, we do get the, the correct coefficients. However, the standard errors of the second stage regression are not correct. They should be should be adjusted. So so therefore, I wouldn't recommend to do this uh, two stage least squares in Excel necessarily because this uh, this uh, standard errors will be biased in the in the second stage. So that's one reason then that or one motivation to use uh, uh, Stata or or there's also I, this kind of IV regression packages for for uh, R or or other other software. Okay. So let me give you an, uh, another another example, and this comes from the from the Finnish electricity distribution industry. So uh, uh, this is actually something that I have I have uh, worked on quite uh, intensively in my own own research. So I have taken from the Finnish Energy Authority this kind of data of uh, of uh, electricity distribution firms in Finland, uh, and I here try to fit the production function, uh, assuming the Cobb-Douglas functional form, and I take the the amount of energy uh, transmitted uh, to the customers as the output, and and I have two inputs: uh, labor and capital, and. Uh, I have here actually for the for the for the labor input I, I proxy use as a proxy the operational expenditure which does include the wages paid by the company but also a large proportion of uh, of labor is actually outsourced to some some contractors so that's why we we typically use an operational expenditure as a proxy for the labor input but then very often in the estimation of uh, production functions the uh, capital input is somewhat um, somewhat problematic and uh, and the idea here is that we have two alternative uh, measures of the capital stock one is based on the replacement value another is uh, net use value and then the idea here is that we use the replacement value as as the Finnish energy regulator is using is the as the input variable but then we use this alternative measure of the net use value as an instrument for this in this exercise and I have here in this example, I have a, a two years of observation. I, I treat them as if they were, were just a single cross section. So we have 160 observations in total. So um, for the sake of comparison, here is, uh, here is the estimated coefficients of the Cobb-Douglas production function. So uh, note that in the Cobb-Douglas production function, all of these uh, input and output variables are taken in natural logarithm so it's a, we have the logarithm of operational expenditure and logarithm of the replacement value of the capital stock and uh, everything looks nice we have relatively high r squared statistic indicating good empirical fit and both of the input variables are uh, highly significant um, so i have done this estimation now in in stata because as i mentioned in the in Excel, we cannot do the do the uh, we do not get the correct standard errors for the second stage estimation. So this is for the sake of comparison. What if we just uh, ignore the possible measurement error in the capital stock and just run uh, run OLS? Okay. So I want to also highlight this couple of um, couple of uh, alternatives in the in the in the stata for 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 dealing with the instrumental variables so so to to clarify some of the some of the issues so then recall that in the two stage least question uh, we 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 do two two estimation steps so in the first stage we regress now this our our input variable so this uh, replacement value of capital or its logarithm uh, on the log of uh, net use value and the and the and the log of uh, operational expenditure, and we we then form a prediction of the of the replacement value. 
So the idea here again is that uh, this capital is very hard to measure and uh, we suspect that there may be some measurement errors in this replacement value of the of the capital but by using this alternative measure based on net use value and we also take this operational expenditure into account we can get the predicted value of the replacement value and uh, this prediction we hope that it is more clean measure of the capital stock that we can then plug into this uh, original production function in the second stage okay so that's what we that's what we do and uh, here is uh, in uh, in uh, stata i have used this kind of uh, uh, particularly this two stage least squares option so in this case uh, stata literally does this uh, first stage regression as well and and reports these coefficients uh, so in the upper part of this uh, this uh, uh, this results table you see that there is this uh, two equations that have been estimated and uh, there are the r squared statistics and uh, and f statistics and p values for both uh, two both stages of the two stage least squares so in this case stata literally estimates these two two separate regression models and then in the bottom part of the table you will see the dependent variables indicated on the on the on the so, so in the first uh, first part of the sec bottom to table there is this uh, logarithm of the uh, replacement value of capital stock is the dependent variable and you get the coefficients and standard errors and so on for the for that regression so that would be exactly identical if you do it in uh, in uh, in uh, excel for example but then the bottom part is the second stage and here is where the stata is in automatically adjusting the standard errors to take into account that it's this kind of second stage regression and and this uh, bottom part is actually this uh, uh, production function that we are interested in estimating so we are fitting the the log of uh, energy distributed uh, on the log of operational expenditure opex and the log of uh, replacement value of capital and uh, now notice that uh, the the coefficients of the of the cobb douglas production function change quite dramatically when we use this uh, instrumental variable approach that uh, notice now that for the for the variable input or this operational expenditure this uh, coefficient is very small 0 0.04 and it's not even statistically significant anymore where does this uh, this uh, this logarithm of uh, uh, capital stock uh, gets a coefficient almost close to one so there's very dramatic increase in the in the coefficient of the capital stock uh, when we use the instrumental variable and very sharp decrease in the in the uh, log of opex coefficient and uh, this would be of course natural if uh, if we believe that uh, there was the endogeneity problem in this capital stock uh, so remember that if that is the case then then uh, this uh, coefficient ols coefficient would be downward biased or biased towards zero and it can also influence the other other coefficients so in this example the the use of the instrumental variable uh, made quite a big difference uh, notice also that the empirical fit in the in the first uh, regression for the for the where we uh, explain the replacement value of capital with the net use value we get very very high empirical fit so in the bottom sorry top part of the table we see that the r squared statistic of the first regression was as high as uh, 0 0.9862 so that indicates that the net use value what had very good exploratory power of the of the of the replacement value of capital stock so in that sense uh, it can be helpful to do it in two stages uh, to also see the results of the first stage regression to see that is it uh, is it uh, uh, are, are these uh, these instruments that we have used uh, statistically significant or not um, there's also other other uh, tools in the in stata to do the instrumental variable so it's not not actually necessary to do it in in two stages so if you use this iv regress command uh, in stata then the results look like uh, like this and notice that now this uh, this first stage is not done at all so stata is just doing it uh, directly uh, using this uh, this uh, instruments and if you compare the results actually here it just these coefficients are in different order 
but you will see that uh, the coefficients and standard errors are exactly the same if you use this IV regress uh, command compared to this uh, two-stage least squares. Okay, so there is there is no difference whatsoever in the coefficients or standard errors if you use the, this one or this one. So you can compare that everything is exactly the same. It just stated didn't do this uh, first stage, and it's it's not uh, not entirely necessary to do this uh, first stage at all. But then I also in our our theory uh, lesson I also mentioned you this GMM so generalized method of moments and. Uh, and uh, in GMM, we also get the exactly same coefficients. Notice that the coefficients are exactly the same as in this uh, two-stage least square. So, so using this uh, uh, GMM estimation approach with instrumental variables, it doesn't really change anything in terms of the coefficients. However, the GMM uses uh, somewhat different weighting matrix uh, so uh, here in this case, uh, it's called using so-called robust standard errors. And we come back to these robust standard errors uh, uh, in the next theme when we talk about heteroscedasticity. So that will influence the standard errors and, uh, and uh, p-values and confidence intervals, but it doesn't really influence the coefficient. So if you, if you are reading, for example, the GMM results, uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, you can read the results in the same way as the as the usual OLS regression or the instrumental variables regression. Uh, here it is just a minor difference that in the in the so-called weight matrix, and uh, that influences the the standard errors. But uh, but uh, I hope that this example illustrates that uh, that when you encounter something like GMM regression, it's still a same linear regression and uh, and. Uh, you can still use similar kind of rationale for reading the results as we have uh, become familiar with the uh, Orden least squares and our Excel results. So, so there is the same kind of results table with the coefficients, standard errors, uh, uh, this kind of uh, significance test result uh, uh, or test statistic, uh, p-values and confidence intervals. So, so, so the results are, are very, very similar in this case also. And you can also see that this uh, GMM didn't really change the coefficients at all. All, all. all that changes here is the standard errors because there is this robust weighting, weighting matrix used. So uh, I already mentioned that uh, many times that it's not absolutely necessary to run the regression in two stages, but there can be two, two important reasons for, for using the two-stage uh, estimation method. Uh, one is that it can be helpful in terms of the intuition, and that's why I, I emphasize it so much in this course. Another reason, it can be also providing a, a nice test for the so-called weak instruments. So, of course, we want to have that our instrumental variables are, are highly correlated uh, with, the X, with this uh, regressor X. So, in that sense, if we run this uh, first stage regression, we can then use, for example, the F test to test that does our first stage regression actually give us a, a significant fit or not. So, uh, so uh, to avoid the problem with so-called weak instruments, uh, then uh, we should require at least that the first stage regression is uh, jointly significant, even if none of the instruments are, are individually uh, significant, at least the, the, this first stage regression as a, as a whole should be jointly, jointly significant. So in that sense, uh, it can be useful to run these two two stage uh, two stages separately. It doesn't really take any any time or effort to do it. Uh, if we, for example, use data, so so uh, we can then use this uh, this F test as a as a test against uh, weak instruments. So weak instruments refers to the case that this uh, correlation between uh, Z's and X's is not uh, high enough. Okay. So, as the final topic of the of the instruments, I will I will then uh, also introduce you the so called uh, Hausmann test, which is a very useful specification test for for the instrumental variables, and we will later use also it in uh, in the context of panel data. Okay, thanks. Bye bye.